Hello everyone, welcome to the third weekly Desktop Dungeons Challenge Run. This week we're doing something slightly less ridiculous than last week, which was Labyrinth, Purist, and Wormonger. We're going back to the badge combination of the first video, so Purist and Miser, but we're taking it in a slightly more difficult dungeon. In this case, it's going to be the Shifting Passages. So, um... Just a bit about this video, this is a post run commentary, as you can probably tell, there's no sound, unfortunately, I apologize for that. The reason for that is that when I was playing this, I was really sleepy, and I played I, I, not, I played kind of poorly, I made a bunch of mistakes, but really my commentary was terrible, I, I, I was all over the place. Uh, so I decided to record over it, and I'm thinking this is probably better for me, because I, when, when I try to comment as I play, I just don't do very well <laughs> either in commenting or in playing so I'm playing this time as an elven transmuter and the reason for that is not necessarily because I think it's the best class for this but because I think there are some interesting synergies between the shifting passages and transmuter basically uh, the first no benefit you notice with the transmuter is that they start with lemmy which they can use a, a, to scout out the dungeon a bit It'll reveal st stuff like the gly like glyphs and altars, which we need because we don't have any items. Uh, and because the shifting passages start out really open, you can really easily get to all those things that Let Me See reveals. And then uh, plan out your run. Usually you'll get to see which random boss you get. So yeah, you get to make a plan and quickly get the stuff you need to execute that plan. So that's pretty awesome. And the shifting passages is accommodating for that. Um, there are other benefits, obviously, to transmuter, and the reason we're playing an elf is that I don't ha I'm not going to have any like shop items to convert to go over the thresh the thresholds to get the transmuter's spirit sword bonus. So yeah, elf it is, 70 conversion points, and so I start scouting out the dungeon. Pack my my altar there, Bindler altar there, burn the resin blood to power, very nice, and Mystera and Medusa, which basically I just I find a, gr a bunch of great stuff. Uh, blood to power with the fireball as an elf, and I, I, as soon as I saw Mystera, I knew I would be worshipping her. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm uh, just pre casting a bunch of glyphs as I go towards Mystera to start accumulating as much piety as possible. I haven't quite realized yet just how, just how good blood to power is going to be for this run, but <laughs> it's going to be pretty amazing. Um, basically, yeah, and Medusa is a great boss. I'm really lucky to have her because low HP means that she's really easy to burst down with fireballs. Especially as a, an elf worshipping Mystera. It's just <laughs> it's just kind of perfect. So yeah, uh, as you can see the glyph casting is making my conversion point meter go up. That's what the transmuter does. And when the transmuter gets a full conversion uh, they get a strength potion. Except that, unlike other classes who have uh, who get their mana drained, and then the amount of mana drained gives them plus their level, gives them their strength bonus. The transmuter just gets just always gets their max mana as the strength bonus. Scouting out a bit more here, just because I don't know all that many things about the dungeon. I find get in there and I get really excited because get in there is awesome, especially with blood to power and burn eras, and especially as a transmuter. And yeah, this com this combo. Uh, I I haven't thought about blood to power yet, as you can tell. I haven't picked it up, but <laughs> you you'll, you'll see. It, it just it works out really nicely together. So I'm really close to my conversion. And I'm starting. I'm trying to think what I should target right now. Uh, the goats are pretty, uh, pretty obvious level three targets since they have lower HP than most monsters. Uh, but they have magic resist, so I'm not sure. And I'm thinking maybe that wraith, since it has, since it doesn't have any magic resist, but then it has physical resist, which will be annoying for my spirit sword. Ultimately, it's pretty obvious here in hindsight that the goats are the good targets. Because 25 magic resistance isn't that much a huge deal um, when you take into account their lower da their lower uh, HP and really the the, mo the blunt of the damage here is coming from the spirit sword. So this goat will make a fine uh, 
level one kill, and I'm just realizing what one thing I really should do is get that extra point of magic, which will not only make it a bit easier, easier to cast, but also make my uh, spirit sword one point stronger, which, as you'll see, turns out to be essential. So one last fireball, and win. Excellent. So now, next target, and well, really a level four wraith <laughs> is a pretty excellent target for anyone who uses blood to power. Also, I'm not really thinking. I'm get I'm getting I'm getting used to. It. That's one thing that happens. I don't play the transmuter all that often, so I get my first spirit sword and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And then I'm like, yes, let's do that on someone else. And then I realize that no, I have to get a full con conversion for that. So either convert some vein or cast more spells. But anyway, r regardless, even without that, the rate is I can take on the wraith perfectly fine. Just need to precast get in there, which I've done. And this is something I did. Oh, by the way, that that extra square of exploration was completely useless. Not sure. Like again, I was kind of sleepy while playing this run, so I do all sorts of little extra things for no reason that I waste some resources. But it turns out fine. Also, by the way, I did not n realize that, but apparently Blood to Power gives Mystera Piety. I, I just wasn't aware of that. Just this a neat little thing I figured out. So since I don't still don't have a Spirit Sword, it makes perfect sense to target uh, a monster that's one level uh, higher from me. Again, same, same, same stuff. Precast get in there and then use Blood to Power to get as many Fireballs as possible. Or not, or or you can just uh, hit the boss once, hit hit the enemy once, dodge, and then hit it again. I think I was just going to hit it, blood to power, and then get it for a strike, which works fine too. In fact, it's probably better. And now I'm getting pretty close to my spirit sword again. So I'm just, uh, I believe what I'm doing here is simply like building it up a little bit. Or rather, attacking the wraith and then realizing, oh wait, I'm close to to the threshold. Let's explore a bit, look at this uh, sub-dungeon. Titan Guitar won't be useful for this run. And now I'm ready to take it on. See, 60 fine conversion points means that in two fireballs I'm going to trigger my conversion, be drained of mana, but I'll be at zero anyway, which just turns out perfectly fine. So yeah, you have to constantly keep an eye out on your conversion meter when you're playing a transmuter, which is just not something you have to do very often with other classes. If you're wondering why I'm doing some weird things with my cursor, it's like like I said, I was commentating as I was playing, but I was doing so really poorly. And yeah, I think that was that was just an extra blood to power cast for no reason again. I mean, you can argue that I gave me piety and conversion points, so it's not m that much of a waste. Anyway, right now I'm attacking this level 5 goat just because basically I know that there, right now there isn't really any other good monster for me to fight. I don't, I'm not close to a conversion. Uh, so a level 5 goat, and then other level 5s. That other goat is going to be just fine. Of course, I forget to precast get in there. And now, well, I'm level 4, almost level 5, but there's really no monster I can take on that's a much higher level than me, or that's a higher level than me at all. Also, I realized I'd overshot for Mystic Balance for a while now. That, that happens, <laughs> especially when you're sleepy. 
it, it's it's easy, a bit easy to lose track of an, uh, so of some things when playing the transmuter just because you have to track that conversion meter on top of everything else. Usually, usually I end up losing track of something else in return if I do manage to keep track of the conversions. So, obviously, I can't take out this level 9 Wraith right now, but I am 1 XP close, close to leveling, so a level 4 plus level 5 resources is more than enough to take out level 5 Wraith, and that, that uh, bonus experience for killing a monster 4 levels higher is definitely worth one piece of popcorn. Of course, choosing a popcorn that won't upset Mysterio is generally a good idea. Obviously, in this case, because I killed that level 1 monster, I couldn't uh, precast get in there. So I just uh, explored one square for that. That one square was a better deal than uh, Blood to Power, since, um, since it cost me yeah one square instead of three. And I noticed that I was right next to the conversion, so I just cast one blood to power to set it off. Now I'm ready to tackle another high level monster. With my newly charged spirit sword. And also, look at that, isn't it nice? nice? I'm an elf of Mystera, so I have 15 mana without even having to convert anything. And I haven't picked up all the boosters yet. This means that I can that the elf transmuter is basically one of the few uh, elf classes who really get a lot out of the refreshment. Cause uh, you know if you're if you're playing as an elf anything else, um, you need to convert your glyphs for more max mana. But refreshment gives you mana based out of max mana, so it's always kind of it feel it feels bad to. <laughs> It feels it feels it feels bad to use refreshment as an elf. It's a lot. It's a lot more, a lot less wasteful as as a gnome because you can you get less mana for your less mana for your conversions, but your conversions also give you mana potions for more mana and so on. Yeah, so that that was silly of me. I. Uh, <laughs> This always happens when I play shifting passages. I don't do it very often, so I, I, I'm never ready to get locked in. Thankfully, thankfully there was that spot next to Bin Lord that let me escape. So I'm at 50 piety. Now's as is, is good time as any to pick up refreshment, although I won't be using it right away. And getting a feel for what's the next... Uh, what with my next plan of action, I realize level 6 to level 7 is more than enough to take out Medusa. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to use Mystera Piety to fuel the, the Pact Maker's Scholar's Pact, which on level up is going to be give me even more health to use on Blood to Power to cast more Fireballs. Because obviously I'm just not casting enough Fireballs right now. And yeah, that uh, that square of exploration was not necessary, considering I was uh, considering I, I was had missed the balance, but I'd forgotten for some reason. And right now I'm like I'm freaking out. I'm thinking, whoa, did I attack my Medusa by accident and get mana burn? But no, I had just lost track of my conversion threshold and had my mana drained. So that was a bit of a crummy timing for level up. But as you can see here, it's just perfectly fine. Now, I can attack anything to set off the burning and kill Medusa. And I can't, I'm forgetting, oh, and but I don't want to do that. I, rea <laughs> I realized I didn't want to do that because I had just triggered a spirit sword and I didn't want to waste it on, uh, on a boss that had 3 HP left. Good for me for figuring that out. If I'd been playing right now, I probably would have missed it. Yeah, transmuter is a bit of a tricky class, but if if uh, when they get a proper setup and if you're comfortable with uh, keeping track of what needs to be 
needs uh, keeping track. They get a really awesome advantage in scouting the dungeon at first, and uh, you know, reward rewarding constant spellcasting with extra strength boosts. Uh, just makes makes for really efficient uh, play when, especially when you have stuff like I have that get in there, burn their res, but the power combo with paired with my spirit sword. As you can see, I have a ton of enemies left, even though, and I'm already level seven. And now I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna start taking off Involvia uh, between level seven and eight. I need to get up there, and I'm thinking, well, which monster do I take on now? Um, that level nine dragon, not so good. That Jin has uh, Retaliate Fireball, so I'm not sure. And I, I do something, I, I can't even remember exactly my thought process for this. I just decided to attack the Jade for some reason. And there I used Blood to Power for absolutely no reason, and I, I don't know why. I my, my, my thought process here confuses me enormously. <laughs> yeah, th this is just a sleepiness... Uh, Sleeping is talking. So, what do I do? I fireball dodge, I guess. <laughs> I dodge the uh, retaliate fireball, and then first first strike it. What I should, what I probably should have done, since I was planning on losing my death protection anyway was uh was attacking and actually it didn't matter didn't matter since I had uh first strike but if I didn't I could have attacked and then fireballed since the retaliate fireball wouldn't have affected me and now I'm out of black space so blood to power has finally run out of uses it was extremely useful for this run and I'm about to level up so it's time to start fireballing uh, Evolia and thanks to my very efficient leveling up there's almost no spot where it could go where I couldn't reach it at all. Only between that uh, that goblin and that my minotaur at the top of the screen. Also you'll notice I cast Blood to Power once. This is because I had 14 mana um, 14 mana ready. And uh, even if you don't have any black space, casting Blood to Power gives you 1 mana. So I did it to get myself uh, 15 mana, so 3 fireballs. And now I'm, I have three fireballs to cast, and then I'll get my spirit sword, which will drain my mana, but I'll only have three left, so that's okay. So a spirit sword ready, and exactly on the, at the spot where the boss gets retaliates fireball, which is <laughs> perfect, so I have an excuse to att physically attack it anyway. By the way, if the boss is retaliate fireball and you're fireballing it, n uh, an alt one alternative to uh, attacking it is to set off burning by attacking another monster. So here I start using refreshment, and thanks to my spirit sword that also triggers when I use refreshment, I win. I did the dungeon parched. I was really quite pleased with that. So there you have it. That was my run as the Elven Transmuter of Mystera with Brinde Raz getting there and Blood to Power. I specify all these things because had I not gotten some of these, the run would have been much more difficult. But yeah, if the stars align, uh, this is a really, really awesome combo. Uh, just for uh, for clarity's sake, this was actually my third run as uh, as this combination. I did I did the uh, one run that uh, <laughs> basically I messed up the recording, Recording, I messed up the volume for the sound and the sound was really really awful so I scrapped it but it's unfortunate because it was a, an interesting run where I've, I've had to face Frank the zombie as well but I, I I came through with quite a few resources left as well uh, the one thing I didn't have was blood to power but burn the res and get in there was fine so yeah again as you see that's a really short monster list since I didn't bother uh, cleaning out anything after I killed the bosses so yeah, efficient efficient leveling here is what this is all about. Good stuff. As for the second run I mentioned earlier, well, it was uh, a complete disaster. I played terribly and I didn't I didn't keep it. <laughs> but yeah, 
so I hope you enjoyed this video. It was it was fun. Uh, I enjoy playing the transputer because he's 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 always interesting. He, he he's tricky, but he feels really rewarding and satisfying when you pull when you pull off good runs with him. So I uh, I hope that was fun for you. I hope maybe that might encourage some people to try the transputer if they've been avo avoiding it, like I had been avoiding it for a long time. And hopefully I'll see you next week.